Here we're gonna explore a nice family of second order nonlinear differential equations. And these were recommended by the so-called integral suggester, but he really is taking on a lot of other roles now by recommending lots of problems that aren't integrals. Feel free to get in touch if you have a problem that you'd like to see me solve. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We want to look at the family of differential equations, inverse tangent y double prime plus inverse tangent y prime equals theta for a variety of values of theta. And so we'll pick three values in particular, and I think these three values will kind of give us a good idea of what happens in general. We're going to use the following sum angle formula for tangent. So it says that tangent alpha plus beta equals tangent alpha plus tangent beta over 1 minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. Okay, so let's get to the setup first before we look at our special cases. So since we have y double prime and y prime, but we don't have any y, we might as well think of this instead of a second order differential equation as a first order differential equation where the variable, the dependent variable is y prime. So we can do that carefully by setting z equal to y prime. And notice that means that z prime equals y double prime. And thus our equation up here is now arctan of z prime plus arctan of z equals theta. Okay, nice. And now we'll use this sum angle formula for tangent and we'll use it by applying tangent to both sides of this equation. So let's see what we get if we do that. Keeping in mind that we're viewing this arctan of z prime as like our alpha term and this arctan of z as like our beta term and furthermore tangent and inverse tangent like annihilate each other. Okay, so doing the tangent of this sum will give us tangent of alpha, but that's just z prime, plus tangent of beta, but that's just going to be z, over 1 minus z times z prime. And then over here on the right-hand side, we have tangent of theta. Okay, so now that we're at this spot, this really maybe tells us that we should look at a couple of different values of theta, which might provide very different types of solutions. And those different values of theta are zero, because tangent of zero is zero, maybe pi over four, because tangent of pi over four equals one, and then also maybe pi over 2, because tangent of pi over 2 is not defined, we get a 0 in the denominator, but we'll take that to be like infinity. Okay, so let's maybe write that out real quick right here. So we'll look at these three cases. So our first case, like I said, will be theta equals 0. Great. But if theta equals zero, that means that tangent theta is also equal to zero. But if a quotient is equal to zero, the numerator is equal to zero, and we get z prime plus z equals zero. So that's our first case, if theta is equal to zero. So that's a fairly simple differential equation, as we will see. And then the second case will be theta equals pi over 4. That means that the tangent of theta is equal to 1. I think this probably is very similar to theta equals anything that doesn't give us 0 or infinity, like I said. But that gives us the differential equation z prime plus z equals 1 minus z times z prime. So I got that because tangent of theta was 1 and I could just cross multiply that up there. Okay, so again, it's a first order differential equation, but it's nonlinear in this case. Okay, so now let's see what we have for our last case. So this would be theta equals pi over 2. And here I'll be not very careful and say this means tangent of theta equals 1 over 0. And I really want to point out that it's like 1 over 0 because that means the denominator is 0. So that means our differential equation is 1 minus z times z prime equals 0. Okay, good. 
So now let's look at each of these separately, maybe starting with the first, next to the third, and we'll finish off with this second one because it's the most difficult. Okay, so like I said, let's look first at our theta equals zero case. But as I said, our theta equals zero case gives us this differential equation. We have z prime equals minus z. But that's pretty easy to solve, really just with the guess and check method. You want to look for a function whose derivative is negative what you started out with. And that just gives us an exponential function, which is z equals e to the minus x. But we need a constant in there. So we'll say a times e to the minus x. So we've got something like that. But notice, let's recall that our original differential equation had to do with y. So this tells us y prime equals a times e to the minus x, which tells us that y is a times e to the minus x plus b, just by integrating both sides. Okay, so there's our general solution for this first case. So let's maybe put a check mark here to say we've taken care of that. Now let's move into this third case. So that's the case, like I said, where theta is equal to pi over two. And that means we get this one minus z times z prime equals zero. In other words, we get z times z prime equals one, which is in fact integrable. Notice we can integrate the left-hand side and we'll just get z squared over two. We can integrate the right-hand side and we'll get x plus a constant. So let's do that. So we have z squared over two uh, equals x plus a constant, which I'll call a. But notice that tells me that z is equal to the square root of 2x plus a. You might say, well, isn't it 2a? But in fact, we'll just use a again. We will absorb this 2 into that constant because it's an arbitrary constant. And that's something that's typically done when solving these types of differential equations. Okay. So now where can we go from here? Let's recall that z was equal to y prime. So this means that y prime is equal to the square root of 2x plus a. And again, we can integrate both sides of that. If we integrate the left-hand side, we just get y. And then integrating the right-hand side is not too bad. So let's see what we get for integrating the right-hand side. We can view this as 2x plus a to the half power. So we can use the power rule. So let's see, our new exponent will be three halves, but then we need to multiply by two thirds because that is uh, exactly the reciprocal of three halves using the power rule. But then we also have to divide by two because we've got that two in front of the x. So all in all, we'll get one third and then two x plus a to the three halves, and then we have a, another constant of integration. So this would be our solution for this third case, this case when theta is equal to pi over two. Okay, so that's a nice warm up. Now we'll look at this case when theta is equal to pi over four. Now we're ready for the main event, which is the case when theta is equal to pi over four, and thus we have this differential equation z prime plus z equals one minus z times z prime. So this is something called an autonomous differential equation, which means it only depends on the dependent variable. And at least first order autonomous differential equations are separable. So we should be able to do separation of variables technique on this. Okay, so let's first solve for z prime and then we'll go from there. So I'll add this z times z prime to the left and subtract z from the right. So that'll give me z prime times one plus z after factoring this z prime out equals one minus z. And now I can subtract by one plus z, and that'll give me z prime equals one minus z over one plus z. And now I'll use the slightly problematic strategy of writing z prime as dz over dx, and then separating that out into our differential z part and our differential x part. So there's a way to write it carefully, but you end up with the same answer. So I think this is a nice abuse of notation. So here we'll have dz over dx, or dz by dx is one minus z over one plus z. We can move all of the x parts to one side of the equation and all of the z parts to the other side of the equation. So that gives us one plus z 
over one minus z dz equals dx. Okay, and now we can integrate both sides. So we'll integrate this side and then we'll integrate this side as well. So the way to integrate this rational function on the left-hand side is to do a little bit of a simplification on this one plus z over one minus z. And we can in fact write it as two over one minus z minus one. So something like that. And now that's easily integrable. And now we'll integrate both sides and let's see what we get. So over here on the left-hand side, we'll have minus 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus z. And then we'll have minus z equals x plus some constant. I'll call that constant little a for now. Okay, so for my next step, I want to divide both sides by negative 2 and then switch the order of this 1 minus z, which is an absolute value. So let's see what that will leave me with. That leaves me with the natural log of the absolute value of z minus 1. And then we'll have plus 1 half z equals 1 half x, negative 1 half x, I should say, plus a new constant, which I'll call a1, which has just had all those constants from before absorbed into it. I think a minus half in this case. Okay, so from here I'll exponentiate both sides to get rid of this natural log. So exponentiating this side will give me z minus 1, and that's because the exponential and the natural log will cancel, and then I'll have e to the z over 2. So recall that an exponential will turn this sum into a product, so that's why we have this product here. And then over here on the right hand side, we'll have e to the minus x over 2 times e to the a1, but I'll just call e to the a1 capital A. So now things are looking pretty good. It's actually pretty hard to solve things like this for z because we have like a polynomial type thing times an exponential type thing. But there's a very special type of function that allows us to do that. A function which has been made famous by a um, YouTube math person already. So post in the comments if you know what function this is before I reveal it and if you know who has made that famous. But we need to do a little bit of work on this to put it in the right form. And the work that we will do is as follows. So I'm going to multiply both sides. So let's write that. Multiply both sides by e to the minus one half all over two. So something like that. So let's see what that leaves us with. That leaves us with z minus 1 over 2 here. And then we'll have e to the z minus 1 over 2 equals a times e to the minus x over 2. You might say, well, shouldn't that be a over 2 and e to the minus x plus 1 over 2 or something like that? But I'll just absorb this constant inside of the a. If you're a little bit worried about doing that, maybe I'll call this a naught for just a second before I absorb that constant in there. But now we're actually in a good spot and we can use this thing called the Lambert w function. And what does that allow us to do? Well, the Lambert w function is the inverse of something that looks like an exponential function like this. So if f of x equals x e to the x, then f inverse of x is equal to this Lambert w function, which is w of x. So what that means is that w of x e to the x is equal to x. That's the function inverse function relationship. So if we want to solve for z minus 1 over 2 in this case, we can just apply this Lambert w function. And what does that give us? That will give us z minus 1 over 2 equals w of a times e to the minus x over 2. And now we're in a pretty good place. We have not much to do to solve for z. And I'm actually not going to do that on the board. I'll just jump to the next board where we have solved that for z. So this is where we ended up on the last board. Well, actually, maybe half a step from where we ended up on the last board. We had z equals 1 plus 2 and then w a e to the minus x over 2. But let's recall that z was like an intermediate variable. What we really want to do is solve for y, and it's related to z by z equals y prime. So maybe I'll erase this z and I'll just rewrite it with y. 
prime, I guess I should say. And now we can integrate both sides. It might be a little bit worrisome because this w a e to the minus x over 2 may, might have a difficult integral. But in fact, this integrates quite nicely. OK, so let's see how this can go. So if we integrate both sides, we'll have y equals. So 1 integrates to x. And then we'll have a constant of integration related to this new integral. I'll call that b. And then we'll have plus 2 times the antiderivative of w a e to the minus x over 2 dx. And now we'll do a couple of changes of variables on this guy right here to finish it all off. So the first one will be to set u equal to a e to the minus x over 2. And so since we've got a composition of functions going on here, this is a fairly standard thing that you might want to do. But let's notice that that means that du is equal to minus a over 2 e to the minus x over 2 dx. We can, in fact, solve that for dx. And let's see what that leaves us with. So dx will be equal to minus 2 du over u when all is said and done. And so that's just putting it back in terms of that variable u. OK, so let's see what that leaves us with. So we'll have x plus b plus the antiderivative at this point of w of u over u du. And this actually shouldn't be a plus. It should be a minus 4. So we get a minus 4 from this 2 and this minus 2. So from here, we can do another change of variables. So what I'll do now is set t equal to w of u. But since this w function is really best looked at as the inverse of a more nicely behaved function, maybe we should apply that more nicely behaved function to both sides. So that gives us u equals t times e to the t by the function inverse function relationship. But now we can take du and using the product rule, we'll see that that is equal to e to the t and then 1 plus t dt. So we have something that looks like that. So let's see what that does to our integral. We have x plus b minus 4 times the integral of, well, so let's write it all down. So we'll have a t times e to the t times 1 plus t dt in the numerator. So the t comes from the w of u, and all the rest of it comes from the du. And then in the denominator, we have e to the t times t, and that's from this u. So some nice stuff cancels. So notice this guy cancels with this guy. And we're left with only this polynomial term 1 plus t. So that has a fairly nice antiderivative. So now we will have x plus our constant b minus 4 times t minus 2 times t squared. So that's just taking the antiderivative of 1 plus t. And now we just have to work ourselves back out of this substitution. So let's recall that t was this Lambert w function, w of u. And then u was that a e to the minus x over 2. So that allows us to write our final answer pretty easily. So notice it'll be x plus our constant b minus 4 times this w function evaluated at a e to the minus x over 2. And then minus 2 times this w function evaluated the same place uh, squared. Great. And so that ends up being our solution. So all in all, it does use a special function, but it has some nice like steps and strategies to get to this final solution. And that's a good place to stop.